Hey guys, uh, so today we are going to do a quick demo of um, EBS Cloud Manager. And um, I already have it deployed in our OCI lab. And I'm going to quickly pull it up here and um, walk you through the capabilities that comes with the latest um, EBS Cloud Manager. So this is my EBS uh, Cloud Manager um, URL. It's running on HTTPS on port 443. Um, I have it um, single sign-on enabled, which means that uh, my identity cloud service login uh, for our OCI tenancy works as a login for the cloud manager utility as well. I don't need to have a separate login for cloud manager. So let's log in. Um, <clears throat> Okay, so this is your home screen. Uh, once you log into EBS Cloud Manager, uh, you'll be able to see what um, environments you currently have. I um, you know, created um, in February a demo environment through this um, con uh, Cloud Manager portal. I'll show you how simple it is uh, to actually provision new environments, whether it's uh, vision instances or fresh installs. And then we'll see what other lifecycle activities we can perform using uh, the Cloud Manager. So essentially, as you can see, there is this, uh, there are two ways of provisioning your environments. So there is a one-click provision environment option and the other one is advanced. So let's look at the advanced provisioning because that'll give you more detail and we'll be, we'll be able to um, customize better. So here, environment name, essentially you provide whatever your environment name needs to be. Let's say we call this CIGT EBS Demo 2. We pick a network profile here. I will uh, go through the network profile piece as well. It's simple. You essentially are telling your cloud manager where to create your um, EBS instance as to you know which virtual cloud network to use, which subnets, etc. So that's pretty simple to create. We'll go through that as well. So for now, I have one created. We're just going to use that. So here, let's say we're doing a new installation, or as you can see, we can provision from object storage backup as well, which means if you, you can use your cloud manager to migrate from on-premise to OCI. So what you do is you download the OCI backup module on your on-premise database server, use that to backup your on-prem database to object storage and from object storage you access the backup right uh, the uh, backup bucket you have the encryption password keep in mind all backups that go to oci are always encrypted at least at a password only level um, and then you put in your passwords and you're able to create a new ebs instance using your on-prem backup so essentially you're cloning from your on-prem backup, on-prem um, database server, EBS database server to your um, OCI. Let's, let's stick to the new installation for now. <clears throat> uh, I already have a vision install running. So let's say we'll do a fresh install for now. Uh, let's go with, uh, I have a 12.2.9, let's go with 12.1.3 running. Um, so that's pretty much it. You select these options and then we move on to the database tier. Database tier, um, <clears throat> your SID can be anything. Uh, let's call it demo DB, anything that you want it to be. Here you Pick the compute shape that you want this uh, to your database to run on, whether you want so this uh, essentially ties to the number of licenses you have available. So say you have licenses available, one proc license equates to two OCPUs, so you can pick the two OCPU shape. Uh, pricing uh, on um, 
OCI differs on the number of OCPUs used. So the number, the more the number of OCPUs, the larger your uh, bill would be. So because this is a demo environment, um, I'm going to keep it at the lowest shape. Here you can see that you can also have uh, an option to enable TDE if you want to. Um, just before you uh, just keep in mind that to use TDE, you need to have the advanced security licensing feature uh, with your Oracle Database Enterprise Edition. So if you don't have that, do not enable TDE. Uh, let's give an admin password. Uh, I usually have a standard password that I use. Okay, that's a long password. Uh, false domain selection. Again, this is uh, on um, the infrastructure side. So essentially, false domains are subsets of your availability domains, which are essentially your data centers in OCI. And false domains are important because they have um, false domains are separated by, you know, redundant power supplies, uh, redundant network switches, uh, storage switches, etc. which means that um, <clears throat> your, if you have two nodes running in a cluster in two different fault tolerance domains, the likelihood of both of them going down at the same time is um, minimal. So unless uh, we want to select, uh, you know, false domains manually, if uh, this makes sense when we are doing a clustered environment and I want one of my nodes to run in fault domain one, so I want to manually pick that and then I want the other node to run in fault domain two. But here, since it's not really a cluster, we'll just keep the false domain selection as automatic so Oracle can decide on its own. You can also see that here we are simply choosing a compute VM to create the database tier, which means that it's going to be pretty much what you have on premise. We also have the option to create virtual uh, machine DB system. D what's the difference between DB system and compute VMs? DB systems is essentially your platform as a service, which means that you have the option of renting your database licenses. As you can see here, it says license included. And it comes with a lot of cloud tooling. So essentially, you don't have to do anything. Um, Oracle will, in the background, install your database software, optimize it for an EBS environment, and even for ongoing maintenance. It is uh, very simple to maintain because it provides a lot of cloud tooling for backups, for applying PSUs, etc. Again, you have full control over your uh, DB system, so do not think that Oracle is just going to go in there and patch it whenever they want it. That's not the case. Uh, you have full control and Oracle will just make it available and give you the tooling where you don't have to log in <clears throat> to your database server and you know bring up OPatch and uh, apply it from command line. You can use a GUI <clears throat> to apply your PSUs. So, uh, so as you can see, we can create a virtual machine DB system here with either license included if we don't already have a license, but if we already have a license, we can use our bring your own license model. Keep in mind, BYOL is considerably cheaper than your license included shapes. Uh, the database patch level, as you know, uh, EBS is only certified right now for 1212. I mean, it's certified for 19C as well, but um, on uh, DB systems, um, it, it's, it's still in, the process of it uh, for DB system pieces. For compute, you can still uh, go ahead and create a 19C for um, a 12.29. But for 12.13, it's still 12.102. 
Okay, here again, uh, you have all the shapes that you can choose from for DB systems. The minimum shape that you can choose is 12, uh, 2.2. And in compute, you saw that we could choose 2.1, but for DB system, the minimum is 2.2. Also keep in mind that on EBS DB systems, there is no option to create uh, a non-container database, which is what EBS runs on. So when you're creating, um, using your EBS Cloud Manager, when you're creating an EBS database, even from your on-premise backup on DB system, the Cloud Manager tool in the back end is actually performing that operation as well, where it's converting your non-CDB EBS database to a CDB EBS database. So it's like, you know, a one-stop shop for not just migrating to OCI, but also to convert to the CDB model, which is the recommended model going forward. Again, um, then we also have uh, an exit data DB system uh, option here for which you already have to have an exit data DB system created, which is essentially exit data works a little differently. So because exit data is, you know, they're giving you um, a base system, you have to go into your compute console and create an exit data based system first. And on top of that, you can start creating your DB instances. So it's pretty much the same thing. Uh, your admin, admin password, PDB name, DB, DB patch level, the only difference is that you have to have a DB system, base system already created before you can start creating DB instances using Exadata DB system. So for the purpose of this uh, demo, we'll just go ahead with our compute uh, virtual machine. And let's click on next, okay. So now from the application standpoint, um, we can use to choose if we want multiple application nodes, we can choose to create a load balancer. As you know, on Oracle Cloud, you have load balancer as a service as well. So you can create a new load balancer instance. Uh, you can choose to create a new load balancer instance, in which case um, uh, this CM application will ask you what bandwidth you want. So these are the shapes that are available, 100, 400, and 8,000 Mbps, which is eight gigs. Protocol, we can either use HTTPS or HTTP. Um, recommended is, is always HTTPS. And then um, you can choose your own host name, whichever we want it to be, and whatever domain we want it to be, the port that we want to use, we can customize this if you want it to be, say, 4443 instead of 443. Then, um, so that's your web entry point. Now, if you don't want to use a load balancer, for instance, this is a demo instance, and we don't need multiple application tier nodes, we can also go for um, an application tier node op uh, option here. And also you can see there's a manually configured load balancer, which means if you don't want to use Oracle's load balancer as a service, you can have your, say, your own F5 load balancer running in Oracle Cloud, and you can use that as well. So there, again, you just set up your web entry point, which will essentially go and update the application uh, profiles and set it accordingly. So for now, for this demo, we'll just keep it at our application tier node. Okay, um, and then we're still using HTTPS. This is our host name. We're gonna change this to demo two because we already have one running. Um, number of nodes is one. We're picking the minimal shape here again. Storage per node, uh, by default, they give you 150 gigs of storage. Let's say we want to add, you know, 256 gigs more. Uh, again, false domain selection, since this is just a single node, I will keep it at automatic. Same thing uh, is here, um, appears here if you want to do it manually. You have three false domains to choose from. Okay, let's go next. Now it's gonna give us a review of what our environment name is, what we are, the version of EBS we have chosen, the database version, the network profile, and the database details. We're running it on compute. Database name is demo DB. Um, shape is 2.1. We chose not to enable TDE 
Web entry point, we're not using a load balancer. Application tier node is our web entry point. We have HTTPS protocol enabled. We're going to be using self-signed certificates right now for HTTPS. Um, Portus uh, 4443, this is our host name. This is our domain name. And then um, application tier again, the number of nodes is one. This is our compute shape that it's running on. Additional storage per node is 256. Uh, default storage per node is 150. File system node is non-shared because it's only one node. Again, this is uh, another cool thing that it will create a shared application tier for you um, in the back end on its own uh, if you choose additional number of nodes. So it's a pretty cool tool, uh, at least from, uh, you know, I used to be an Oracle Labs DBA. So from my perspective, a lot of these uh, things we had to do manually and it would take a long time. Um, so for, for being able to create an EBS um, install so easily using a GUI uh, is pretty cool to me, especially being able to create the, all these different topologies. Okay, so while this is getting created, we're gonna uh, leave this be. Let's quickly visit network profiles. So network profiles is essentially, um, you can create a new network profile where you are telling um, your EBS cloud manager as to where your this EBS instance is going to be created. So for now, we are we use all of our demo instance to be created in the demo compartment, but we have our um, um, and we have our demo uh, network also created in our demo compartment, which is as you can see virtual and demo right here and then uh, subnets you can either you're telling uh, you're, you're creating a network profile so depending on whatever you um, create here it will create your EBS instance so for us um, when I created my Vigilant demo network I created the subnet levels as a regional and not AD specific but um, here we can choose uh, availability domains as well. I choose AD domain, AD1. Subnet access for database tier, I always keep it as private. Or, uh, you know, if we want to use, because this is a demo environment, we'll keep it as public subnet demo. And then same thing for apps node as well. Uh, we'll choose a public. And essentially, so that's that's the whole idea of a network profile. You are just telling the cloud manager where to create your newly provisioned EBS system. So this is what our, um, this is the network profile we used to create our demo instance right now, uh, which gives us this information. So the region is US Ashburn 1, uh, VCN is Vigilant Demo, subnet type is regional, availability domain is AD1, database tier is getting <clears throat> created at a public subnet right now because this is for a demo purpose and we don't want to complicate uh, access by you know installing VPNs etc so everything is currently public um, which is safe here because this is a very encapsulated just a demo environment and um, same thing here load balancer visibility also is public load balancer subnet is also public so that's uh, the extent of uh, you know network profiles. Um, let's go back to other lifecycle activities that we can do. So you can see we can create. There is a um, backup that I have created of my um, twelve to nine demo instance. It's uh, simple enough to create. Essentially, you click on this button and you can see you can create a backup or you can even clone um, from this already created environment. So these are essentially two um, lifecycle activities that you can uh, conduct using Cloud Manager for environments that are uh, created from the Cloud Manager. And whatever backups you create will show up under the backup tab here, right? And what else can you do? So you can use this backup to create another environment. So you can use a backup that you have to provision a new environment. Then uh, this is essentially your activities log. Um, 
whatever you have done so far and then it goes back to the network profiles so it's pretty uh, it's a pretty nifty tool and if you are going to use uh, oci extensively for your ebs environment um, it's uh, i i would definitely recommend it's a free tool it gives you a lot of uh, good capabilities here so um that would be all for today's demo uh, guys you can reach me at um, <clears throat> amukherjee at vigilant-inc.com if you have any questions and uh, happy learning all right thank you